In this lesson, we are going to look at dimensioning and I will start by uh, going back to the floor plan view here. So this is our floor plan. As you can see, there are no dimensions that are put in place. The first thing to do is to check whether we have set the dimensioning units correctly. And this is done by accessing the options here. So under options, we have project preferences and then we have um, a working units. So working units here we have the length, the area, the volume, the angle, the layout and the numbers, the units uh, set as we had uh, discussed in the previous lecture. So let's go back to options and we look at dimensions here. So click on dimensions. So the project preferences, the dimensions here, because I'm working using the international version, I've set this to plain millimeter. So that's what I wanted to check. Make sure yours is in plain millimeter. If you're working in meters, you can set that to plain meter or, or any other units as you might prefer. So down under linear dimensions, here the unit is millimeter as set. You can see we have other options, but I'm setting millimeters. Yeah, the decimals, uh, we have zero decimal places and extra accuracy is set off. And witness line scalability has uh, scaled. So when that is done, just click on OK. Then let's go to document and then, sorry, document. Under documenting tools, we choose this um, type of dimension as uh, selected here. So click on dimension. When that is clicked, let's go back to the settings di dialog for the dimension. Click on the settings dialog going to open the dimension default settings and under dimension type we have we have settings for the dimension type here so the first one is linear method second one is cumulative method uh, baseline method and elevation dimension in this case because i'm setting linear uh, measurements i want to set a type as linear method do not enable any of these so we have show dimension text only and static dimension so these will be left unticked and uh, mark, uh, marker type you have these types of markers just look for the one that is uh, most interesting or the most preferred for you and, and, and set that and then you'll also customize extensions for the line witness and this is how the line witness looks like so in my case I have this custom height selected from there you have uh, this text or rather a mark pen for or pen types for the marker and pen types for the witness line then we'll move down to text style and in terms of text style i want us to set the font type as dm sans that's my favorite dm sans uh, we have um, down here the dimension text pen set as uh, pen number 46 and the font size as two millimeter and this other options as you can see on the screen we have down here marker and the uh, witness line options uh, this marker size is 1.25 millimeters uh, the dynamic witness line gap is disabled and then we have custom witness line length as three meters so if we we have pointer because we are not uh, using the pointer um, the pointers so you are not going to change anything here because you are not using the pointer and then the dimension details here uh, we have options for displaying the height of openings as well this is in the case where we are dimensioning openings and i would uh, i would want to have that set and ticked here as determined by width in terms of the skin size so here is set as automatically dimension walls and will uh, be using the outer faces of those uh, building elements for the dimensioning. I think that is set well. Under properties, we have uh, renovation. So this is set as default. And when you are done with that, down here you have the layer as general. So this, the, the layers here is a general uh, dimensioning general layer. Let's just leave it as that and click OK. Then we get back to our floor plan again. And I want to explain a few things before we start dimensioning. There is an order in which we display dimensions on the floor plan. And in this 
in 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 terms of uh, that order the very first dimension line usually uh, indicates the sizes of openings that we have in our building and the second uh, dimension line is going to show the thicknesses of the walls the third dimension line is going to show either the overall size of uh, that elevation or in a case where we have like our case here where we have grid lines the third dimension line is going to show the spacing or the distances between these uh, grid lines then we will have a fourth one which is going to show now the overall dimension for that side so let's get started and the way you place this dimension is that you just zoom we are doing it manually i prefer doing it manually we are going to zoom to that uh, side and then click on the very first point to pick a dimension and then we'll also click on that so all the points that you want to pick you just click to pick them and make sure you are picking uh, the opening sizes so in that case i'll pick up to this external point here then move the cursor pencil like cursor to the side where i want to place my dimension just double click you'll have the, the, the witness line shown as that the cursor is going to change to an armor like uh, figure and then when you are satisfied that that is where you want to place your first dimension line you just click and you'll see your dimension line get placed in this case you are seeing an example of uh, this dimension yeah where you have 2000 and then you have 1500 so in this case you are dimensioning a, a window so we are gi being given these two we are being shown these two uh, sizes here so in this case we have a and b a is a uh, 2000 which is the width and b is the size and uh, the height of uh, that window so that is what we are being shown let's get back to dimensioning again so i want to place our second dimension line in this case we are picking we said what we are picking uh, the thicknesses of the walls so i'll uh, start by picking this just move the cursor where you have the wall and then if it turns to blue that means you are now ready to select that you just click you'll have the, the, the dimension uh, the points uh, picked then we just repeat the same method as we have done double click and then move that cursor up to where you want to place that dimension line and then click to place it so let's do the same the third uh, line we had said we are going to pick the spacing between the grid lines and then we'll place this here and then the very final one was going to be overall dimension so we are picking the extreme farthest end of that building in, in the, the other extreme farthest end and we'll place that dimension line there so in this case i think we've um, just click then I'll remove that. So that is uh, the final one. Eh? Let me select them. Control D on my keyboard and drag towards the inside so that I can have some spacing left for. Yeah, so this is displaying well. Eh? So the same process that we have uh, done on this side is the same process that we are going to do to this other elevation side. So I'm just going to do it as fast pick these points and uh, these other points then the final one is going to be this extreme farth uh, farthest point here because it's, it's it's going to be shown in our elevation then i'll place that line here i'll pick the thicknesses of the walls i start pick the last one place that dimension line there then this other one is picking the sizes or rather the spacing between the grid lines i'll place that dimension line there then i'll pick this point starting point and the farthest point in that elevation side and that will be my overall uh, supposed to be my overall dimension so let's go back pick this zoom back and pick this other one and then place it here and save and we'll do the same to this other side of the building so let's start by picking the sizes of the openings that will be our first dimension line so pick this and that 
pick this and then pick the last point here then we'll uh, click to place that dimension line we'll proceed to pick the thicknesses of the walls place the dimension line on that side then we'll pick the spacings between these grid lines I'm doing it manually because I want to capture the details that I think are necessary for the project. So place that here. Then we'll pick the, the extreme end of uh, that building to that side and then the other extreme end will have our overall dimension uh, placed there. So faster again I'll go to this other side. Let's start by picking sizes of the openings again make sure you pick all the openings and then the last point is this follow along as uh, I, I, I place the dimensions In this case, I'm picking by that dimension line, which is uh, spacings between the grid lines. And I'm placing the dimension line there. I'm going back and picking now the, 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 the two sides, rather the two extreme sides of, the, of that elevation to have my overall dimension in place as that. It, as fast as that, uh, we've uh, now put our um, external dimensions. And maybe in a case where you want to know the sizes of the buildings internally, you can use size of sizes of the rooms inter in internally. You can use uh, the, the grid lines eh? because we've dimensioned the grid lines. Or in some other cases, if you want to put dimensions to the inside faces of the building, you can do that. That's the, the, the normal process that I have taught you. So in this case, let's say I want to dimension from there. And let's say I want to pick the size of that wardrobe. So interior dimensions also would be helpful for someone who is reading your plan. And let's try, let's look at our first dimension line here, which shows the sizes of the openings. But in this case, if you look at a dimension like this one, we have 864. We have another one as 5235 millimeters. And I want them to be whole numbers. Let's say if I tried to change this to 900, uh, that would mean I, will, I am supposed to add a spacing of, of like um, 100 minus 64. That gives me 36 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is select this window, uh, right click, move, drag, and then I'll drag it towards this side by 36 millimeters. In that case, uh, you see this one has adjusted so we have a whole number. Is we able to measure that well? And maybe I can try to adjust this dimension to 6,000. So um, let's have this dimension adjusted as 5,200. Zero, zero. So we have 5,200. Zero, zero. Click on OK. And it shows as that as well. So the same with this can adjust it to 12 200 mm when you are done just click ok and you have that dimension set so before you finalize this section make sure you look at uh, all the dimensions that you've placed make sure that you have um, all numbers in terms of make sure that your dimensions are in all numbers because we don't want to have a case where we have 723 millimeters because when you are on site you are building this on site it will be problematic to try and uh, measure 20, 20, 23 millimeters uh, accuracy. Because in terms of meters, you are going to have this as 0 0.723. And I want this to be 0 0.72. 0 0.7, either 5 or... I think we, we, can, we can just select this a window and uh, try to move it towards this side eh, by 23. Then we will have this ad adjusted as a whole number. Then we look for any other place where we need to adjust. So that side is done. 
is okay this other side we have uh, all numbers let's move to this other side and try to inspect we have some adjustment that we can do here seeing these as 1501 so let's select this right click try to move so i'm going to drag it towards this side by 0.5 millimeters and i'll see this one now adjusting as well so if you're done with that that is going to be our dimension it's going to be our dimension architectural floor plan so try save the file and uh, let's meet in the next section where i teach how now to develop to or rather to where i'll uh, be teaching you how to generate elevations and edit them and uh, generate and edit sections and put that together in uh, um, custom layouts and publish your drawings